Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. It's the start of 2022. It means it's the start of January, and that means it's the start of a brand new month of pens in use. This month's theme, well, what we're going to do is pick the winners from each of last year's price points. So that's under $20, 20 to $50, 50 to $100, 100 to $200, and then over $200. That will give me five pens, but that leaves me with an extra slot for pen number six. So we're going to use a wild card. Please join me down on the mat. Let's jump in and look at the pens I'm going to be using during January of 2022. So here we are down on the mat. Let's jump in and take a look at the first pen for January 2022. The first pen is in the under $20 category, and it's this. This is the D-Like New Moon 2. I love the coloring of this pen. It's so unique. Just look at that as I slowly turn it around. This pen, it's got a fine nib. Let's take a quick look at the nib. You know, it's fairly small. I would say maybe number five size. And it is a cartridge converter. There we go. It's a fairly small pen. It's one of the pens that I have to use posted. But it's fairly comfortable to write with. I enjoy using this pen. And certainly in that under $20 category, it was a really worthwhile winner. The ink that I've put in here is by Diamine, and it's Diamine Writer's Blood. Stretch that pen in. I think it looks quite nice as a combination. One of the things I do find with Writer's Blood, though, is it's very wet. So that's something I do need to be aware of. Let's do a little bit of writing. So we've got here the D-Like. New Moon 2. It's got that fine nib, and this cost me 18 Australian dollars. So just in that boundary. As you can see, it's very dark when it's writing. That's one of the things I want to explore over the next month. The ink, dye mine, writer's blood. Drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, well there's me saying about how wet it is and at 30 seconds it's dry. So this is going to be interesting. It's the first time I've had this ink in this pen. Normally I do have it in more broad nibs and I've had it in one medium. So it could be because of the nib size that may be having an effect. But certainly if that's the drying time that I get through the rest of the month, I'm going to be really happy to use this. So this is the D-Like New Moon 2 with Diamine Writer's Blood. Our second pen today, we're now jumping into the $20 to $50 range. And this pen is by Kaigaloo, and it's the Kaigaloo 316. It's another nice coloured pen, isn't it? I mean, yes, I know we've only had two, but there seems to be a bit of a pattern coming through. One of the things I like about this pen, I'm not sure if it comes through on the camera. It's slightly transparent, so I can actually see there through to the converter. Let me just go around again. I really like the look of this. Let's take off the cap. It's a number six size nib, so a slightly bigger nib there. It's a medium point on this nib though. In the hand, it's nice. It's a little bit too short, but not that it's unusably short. It doesn't post. Well, it does, but I'm not really happy with the way it posts, so I never use this posted. It's comfortable though. And as I said, it looks really nice. Now, in terms of ink selection, up till now, I've only ever used Diamine Soft Mint in this pen. So I thought, it's a new year, let's do something different. So in here, I've got Robert Oster Tranquility. This is one of my favourite inks. I love the way that this ink works in virtually every pen. It's this gorgeous, I'm going to call it a tealy type colour. It's really, it's nice. It's not overly pale, it's not overly green. 
it just hits that sweet spot for me. All the pens that I've had this ink in, they've all shown some really nice shading. So hopefully that might come through with this. Let's do some writing then. So we've got a Kygaloo, three one six with a medium nib. And this one was 24 Australian dollars. The ink, Robert Oster, Tranquility. Drying times, so there's immediate, 10 seconds, well, nearly dry at 10 seconds, 30 seconds, And this is another one after 30 seconds is dry. These two have dried a lot quicker than I normally expect. I'm going to put this down actually to weather conditions. I'm recording at the moment and it's 29 Celsius, which is about 85 Fahrenheit. So it's a fairly warm day already. So that may have an impact on the drying times. I'll check this out later in the month if we are lucky enough to get a cooler day. One thing's about the Australian summers, it gets hot and it stays hot. I'm seeing some shading coming through in this little writing sample. I'll know better as I do my longer term tests and try it on different papers. But certainly at the moment, it's looking like there's going to be some really nice character filled writing coming from this. But this is the Kaigaloo 316 with Robert Oster Tranquility. My third pen for the month. This time it's in the $50 to $100 price range. And it goes to this. This is the Narwhal School Till. This is the Chromis Teal pattern, and I love the color of this. Let me just fetch that in. Just look at that. It's so nice, you've got pale blues, you've got browns, you've got all sorts of different colors in there. I've had quite a few different inks in this, and every ink I've had in it, I've absolutely loved the way it's performed. Let's take off that. So again, number six size nib. This one, again, is a medium. I do have another one of these pens, and I've actually swapped the nib and I've got a broad nib on there. So it's a nice, easy way to swap your nib. If that's something which you're interested in, you know, you don't like the stock nib that comes with it, it's easy enough to change for another number six nib. This one is a piston filler and it's got this window here. So you can see your ink level at the moment. It's fairly full, which is why it's just staying that one really dark color. But the ink in here today, it isn't actually that dark. It's by Dye Mine and it's Diamine O'Donnell. I love this color, it's unusual. Yes, it's in the blue family, but to me, it's different than what I normally see in the blue, which is why I like it. I think there's a nice bit of a contrast here, especially when you see the other inks this month. Let's do some writing. So we've got here a Narwhal. School kill. Again, it's a medium nib. We're jumping up in price now. This was 69 Australian dollars. The ink, as I say, diamine. Oh, Daniil. Let's do our drying times. So I've got immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. And again, another one, it's dry after 30 seconds. As I say, I don't think it's actually to do with the pen and ink combination. I think it's more the temperature today. I want to explore this though, because I have to be aware of this, given that we get, you know, hot summers and, you know, you could be talking three or four months of this. How the ink dries, it's important to me because I like to be able to take long form notes. At 30 seconds, I'm happy with this. But if we say get a cooler day and it takes over a minute to dry, well, that could impact on how I'm taking my notes. So it's something I want to experiment with a little bit more. Let's take a look at the writing. So again, another one. i am seeing a fair bit of shading coming through. I aren't sure here on the nail. It looks like it's feathering a bit and maybe here on the arrows around the nib size. So that's something I need to look at. Again, could be a function of the paper and the, the ink and the temperature. I need to explore it fully. But I'm just pointing out because I'm seeing that at the moment. It could be that's natural. 
and maybe it's not feathering. I'm just being extremely picky. But this anyway is the Narwhal Skull Kill with Diamine O'Donnell. My fourth pen. This is in the $100 to $200 price range. And this pen is the Visconti Breeze. It's another pen I know you're going to get fed up of hearing me saying this. I love the looks of this. Let's fetch this in. It's a gorgeous, I think they call it blueberry. It doesn't look very much like a blueberry to me. I would say it's more like sky blue. And I think if they'd have called it sky, it would have been a lot better. It's still pretty though, isn't it? Look at the blues. We've got some darker blues in there. Then we've got some whites, maybe silvers. Looks quite nice. The cap pulls off. It's a small nib. It's only a number six size nib on there. Maybe is it one of the things that lets it down? Don't know. Let's take off that. And there we are. Cartridge converter. Let's pop this back on. In my hand. It's another one. Again, not certain if it's too small for my hand. Can I post it? Yes, I can. I have to push this cap on a little bit in order to get it to fit. But posted feels a little bit back heavy for me. Fortunately, I get away using this unposted. I'll just pop that back on. This is one of the things I actually like with this pen. Let me hold it a bit down. As the cap goes on, it's got a magnetic fitting. So we get to there, it's fine. Just gonna nudge it slightly. And one more time, then snap, it pulls the cap on. I think that's quite impressive. I know little things like this please little minds. Let me just move the paper. There we go. Let's get that bottom three grids there. So we don't need to move the paper again. Let's take a look at the ink. So the ink in here, this is an ink from the Diamine 2021 ink event calendar. It's from day 18, sub zero. This is a gorgeous pale blue colour. And I think, let's fetch the pen in. I think it's a fairly good match. For the pen so i think as a combo they're going to look really nice the pen's got a broad nib and what that means is i'm hoping that this shimmer that it comes through when i'm writing there we go let's see if i can catch the light just right with that it's got like a silver shimmer to it looks quite nice now we'll do some writing so we're using here a visconti and the model is breeze As I said, it's got a broad nib. Price-wise, this was $164, so yet another big price jump. The ink, Diamine, Sub-Zero. I could do with it being Sub-Zero today, I tell you. This heat, it gets very oppressive very quickly. Drying times, immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Yet again, dry after 30 seconds. When I come back later in the month and I do my half time report, hopefully would have had a cooler day and I will actually repeat this grid. Maybe just the drying times, but just so we can see what difference temperature does have. I think that would be an interesting experiment. Let's look at our writing. I've got to be honest, I'm not seeing as much shading coming through as I would have liked. There's some but not as much as when I look at some of the other inks I've got this month. Can we see any of that shimmer coming through? I think there's a little bit, but it's hard to say at the moment. The lights in here are very bright. I do think it comes over differently on the camera, so hopefully you'll see some coming through on the screen. But this is the Visconti Breeze with Diamine Sub-Zero. Pen number five, this is in the $200 plus range. So we're jumping up in price yet again. And this goes to the Diplomat Aero. This is in the factory color. Essentially, it's the plain metal material. And I think they've just put some lacquer on it to try and prevent corrosion and stuff like that. I actually like it. It's what drew me to this pen. I know they do the Aero in lots of different colors, but I just felt that this, it looks, it's simple, it's clean. And then when we've got the black clip there with it, it just offsets so nicely with the pen. I absolutely love the colours of this. It's another number six nib. It's a nice sizable nib. This one is in broad. 
If I take off the body, again we can see we've got a cartridge converter there. And then the clip just pushes back on. The ink, well you've got a sneak peek at the colour, it's a red ink. It's one I haven't used that much of yet. It's by Waterman and it's audacious red. So this to me tends slightly orange, even though it's called red. But I like that. Again, it's different. I don't like inks that are just, I'm not going to say plain, but I don't like red inks that are just red. I like it to have a little bit of character. Hopefully, because we see here where it's lighter, we might get some nice shading coming through in our writing. There's no sheen or shimmer though, so it's a fairly plain ink like, other than the fact it's that orangey red. Let's do some writing. So here we have a diplomat. Aero. This is the nicest nib I've used so far. It's broad. Price wise, it's 263 Australian dollars. At that sort of money, you expect it to be nice to write with, don't you? I don't think I showed this in the preview. There we go. It's another one, again, not overly big in my hand. And again, it will post, but I tend to use unposted. The ink. Waterman. Audacious Red. Don't you just love that name? Audacious. I think it sounds really nice. It really makes it sound something absolutely amazing, doesn't it? Drying times. So there's a media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, well, not surprising, it's dry. Let's take a closer look at the writing. So with this one, I'm not seeing as much shading as I would have liked to. There is quite a bit, I mean, on the O, and then on the top of the C there, and the top of the S, and the O, and the U. So there is some shading there. I'd like to have seen a bit more, but it is what it is. We have to accept what it is. It's still nice. I love the broad nib on this. As I said, it was so smooth to write with. And this is the experience I've had every time I've used this pen. It's like gliding over the paper. It's nice. For my personal preference, I would have liked to have a little bit more feedback. But as I say, that's very much a personal preference. So this is the Diplomat Aero with Waterman audacious red so the final pen for this month this is what i'm calling the wild card i did five price point videos the under 20 20 to 50 50 to 100 100 to 200 and 200 plus but for my pens in use i like to have six pens so that's where i've got my wild card pen my wild card pen it's the latest pen that i've got it's this one this is the pilot custom 823 i literally only filmed my unboxing of this yesterday you will not have seen the unboxing on the channel yet that's going to come out on i think it's the 4th of january so in the next few days but i wanted to get this pen in there because it's been one of my grail pens it's one of those pens where i've been i'm gonna say i've been lusting after it for ages and when my wife gave it to me as part of the ink event calendar stuff that she did for me wow i was absolutely gobsmacked by it i really was Let's take a look at this pen. There we go. It's in the amber colour. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love that we've got that transparency. The 823, it's a vacuum filler. Now, when I filled this, I could have got more ink in, but I thought, let's only part fill it. That means I can change the ink later on if I want to. Look at this. I could... Well, I could, and I have, sit staring at this for ages. It's just so pretty to look at. We'll take off the cap. There we go. We've got this gorgeous 14 karat gold nib. It's, I think, a number 15 size, but that uses pilot's sizing. Again, it's a broad nib. Let's pop that cap on because we want to get actually get on with the video rather than me just standing there and staring at the pen. The ink, this is another ink from the Die Mine Ink Event Calendar of 2021. There was a couple of browns in there and I picked this one. This is Brandy Snap. This is, to me, it's a pale brown and it's tending to the orange side of brown. And I thought with the amber pen, I think that's quite a nice combination. 
It's another ink I'm hoping to see plenty of shading coming through. Again, we'll have to see how it goes throughout the month. As part of my process with this, I do test my pens on quite a lot of different papers. So this is Optic Paper by Oxford. I also use Tomai River, 52 GSM, 68 GSM. I use Clairefontaine, I use Rhodia, I use uh, the cheap paper from my printer, I use 100 GSM printer paper, and I use some cheap notepads that I buy from the supermarket. So I like to experiment and try a whole range of papers, and this is where I'm hoping that this one will perform so well on all of them. Let's do some writing with the pen. This is what we're here to see, isn't it? Not him for me to talk, we want to see the pens write. So this is a pilot. Custom 823 with a broad nib, and this is my most expensive pen 394 Australian dollars. The ink is Diamine Brandy Snap. Drying times, immediate. Well, that looks wetter than most of the others so far. 10 seconds. It's dried off quite a lot already. 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, yet again, it's dry. I know I said it already. I'll say it again. I think that's down to the weather rather than anything else. Just look at the shading coming through on this. It looks so nice. I like an ink that has got sheen. I like one with shimmer. I like one with lots of shading. To me, it's when you're writing and you're getting this shading coming through, that's adding character to your writing. And whether it's writing a letter to someone or just writing notes for myself, having that bit of character to your writing, it can make all the difference and it can draw your attention in more. And just look at that, what we're seeing here. We've got pale yellows even down to brown and it just looks so nice and it's consistent throughout the whole writing that we're getting all this shading. So this is the Pilot Custom 823 with Diamine Brandy Snap. I'm just going to clear this off and swap over and we'll take one final look at each of the pens. So here we have the six pens I'm going to be using during January of 2022. The under $20 category goes to the D-like New Moon 2 with Diamine's Writer's Blood. 20 to 50, Kaigaloo 316 with Robert Oster Tranquility. 50 to 100, the Narwhal School Kill with Diamine O'Donnell. 100 to $200, Visconti Breeze with Diamine Sub-Zero. $200 plus, Diplomat Aero with Waterman Audacious Red. And then the wild card, the Pilot Custom 823 with Diamine Brandy Snap. So join me later in the month for my halftime report and we'll take a closer look at how these pens have gone. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do you find that the heat affects how you write? Do you find it affects the properties of the ink that you're using? Please drop a comment down below. I'd love to get people's thoughts on this so we can explore this concept of how heat can affect our ink. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.